Okay, so this is uh, Andy Pinhole. It is a soup can cap that is a self-developing pinhole camera, which has a little pinhole there and a shutter here that has some magnetic detents. When his glasses are on, he can see. When his glasses are off, he cannot see. And, and then the mouth here is a light baffle, so you can pour liquid in, but light does not get in. So you can load an image uh, down in the bottom here and hold it down with either a magnet or a piece of double-sided tape. And then once that is held down in there, you can put this guy on closed, go take your picture, and then uh, close that guy. And then pour developer and stop bath and fixer, or just developer and fixer in here and develop the image uh, in your can anywhere. Anyway, in this video I'm going to show you uh, how to put one together and tell you where to download the files for free um, and print one out or 10 out yourself. Um, but first, I'm going to talk a little bit about um, some new and exciting things coming to Camerdactyl in the coming months. So for the last couple of years, I have been extremely lucky to get to design and make cameras for a living at cameradactyl.com. Um, it's kind of my dream job, but I was willing to pay a price to do that. And that price was in an era when there are no Nikons and Canons hiring designers to design film cameras, uh, was to create my own company, uh, Cameradactyl, where I actually make the cameras, but, but the price is that I run the company and do the social media marketing often poorly, and I do the accounting, and I do the packing and shipping and customer service and just everything that comes with running a business, facilities management and janitorial. I spent half an hour sweeping the shop this morning. And so, you know, I am getting to a point um, where the business is doing well, and I spend most of my time doing all of those things that are not designing cameras. Um, and I could, at this point, try and find some more help and try and make more cameras and make cameras more in batches like I've been doing since the Rex. Um, and really kind of scale up. But I think in that future I could I could see myself making some more money, but I don't see it being any less work, and I don't see myself having any more time to do the thing that got me to all of this in the first place, the thing that I love, which is designing cameras and uh, machines and toys. And, and so if people meet me halfway and I sell them the files for a couple of dollars and they do all of the work of printing and trimming and assembling and building their own cameras, maybe... I can design 10 times as many small and large projects in a year. And so I don't know if it's going to work and it's a big risk to try it on a giant project like when I did the Bronco Pan or the Mongoose or something like that. And I'd like to get there, but I'm going to start with some little things like uh, Andy Pinhole here um, and some more pencil cases and some things that are not cameras and some things that are photographic tools. And uh, I'm going to start just uh, annoyingly making you go to my website and buying this thing for zero dollars rather than putting it on GitHub just to, you know, kind of shake down the process. I'm not even taking credit card information, but like, go, it's on sale for zero dollars. Uh, print one. You can use it all you want for your personal printing. You cannot sell them if you want to sell them. Uh, give me a, give me a ring. We'll work something out. Um, but yeah, I, I think if I make a, let's say three dollars on a design that took me a week, I think I can release a whole lot of files and um, yeah. So that's what I'm going to be doing over the next couple of months at Cameradactyl. I hope. Anyway, um, let's get back to the show. I'm going to show you how to assemble one of these guys, and then um, its use is pretty simple. Check out the videos that Joe Van Cleve and I did on the Pinholio, which is another self-developing camera that works similarly. I'll leave the link in the, the description. And um, maybe some of the black and white or color reversal processes and the videos that I made about those and some of the Joe videos. Again, a link in the description. But for now, um, let's get to assembly. Okay, so in the future, I'm going to refer to this video on how to put together this camera. Okay, so you have a couple of things. All of the printed parts. You have the main lid here. Um, that should be printed in black or a 
uh, trans, uh, not translucent color, opaque color. Um, you have the pinhole retaining ring, the glasses, the mustache over here, and the uh, two glasses inserts. Uh, the hardware you will need for this is uh, four 10 by 2 millimeter neodymium magnets, uh, one 8 millimeter M3 screw, and one uh, 12 millimeter M3 screw, or a 10 should be fine. Um, then you will need a piece of a soda can to make a pinhole. Um, and the tools that I use are a pair of gloves, um, a PCB drill bit. Uh, I like 0.2 to 0.4 millimeters for this, uh, depending upon your can size or depth. Sharpie marker is helpful, and a M3 uh, Allen key, or I'm going to use an electric screwdriver here. Um, and then I use one uh, solvent. Uh, it's called Weld On 3. Uh, it's usually used for bonding acrylic and acrylic welding. Uh, I like it for PLA as well. Um, it's super nasty stuff, so I use a pair of gloves. Um, and it comes with these lure lock needle tips that you can change. And basically you just hold the pieces together and squirt some. We'll see that in a second. All right, let's put this thing together. One more thing I forgot to mention. I use a little bit of cyanoacrylate or super glue, crazy glue. Um, the regular uh, thin kind. I don't like the gel for this project. Okay, let's get going. Um, so the first thing I want to do is put the magnets into the eye sockets here. Um, and just for simplicity, I want to keep them all oriented in the same polarity. Doesn't really matter for now. Put a little cyanoacrylate in here. And we're going to bond these magnets in and set them aside. So, one and two. And then I'm going to set this aside to dry where um, I'm not going to pull these magnets out with the other magnets. All right, the next things I'm going to do is put some magnets in the glasses insert. Um, so I'm going to remember which way <laughs> I put these guys, right? Which polarity attracts. And so they're going to go this flip direction so they attract uh, from the glasses holder. All right, put a drop in there. Drop in there. And this guy here, oops, some on my finger. I'm going to put this well away so I don't flip it. And then uh, check again. Okay. Oops, glue my hands together. Alright. Yeah, that's way too much glue. Don't use that much glue. Um, let me find something to wipe it off with. It. Okay, that's wiped off. I'm going to put them to the side to dry. While that glue is drying, I'm going to move on to cutting the pinhole. I'm going to start with the pinhole retaining ring and drawing a circle with my Sharpie about the outside diameter. And then one on the inside diameter. Oops, circumference rather. Uh, okay, and so now this tells me what's going to be inside the retaining ring and what's outside, and so when I cut this guy out, uh, I want to be inside of this line, but outside of that line. It's a pretty good uh, reference. And then I'll just put a little mark for where I want my pinhole. Okay, next thing I'm going to do is cut this thing out. This is going to be a lot of Benny Hill music and fast forwarding, I think. So the next thing you're going to do is drill yourself a pinhole with a PCB drill bit. Um, these guys are very delicate. Um, basically use one hand to press down and the other to rotate very gently. This is also something to fast forward through, but also I'm going to play some at uh, 1x speed so you can see, you know, this is a gentle process and once in a while you will snap a drill bit, but they're inexpensive and you're going to get 10 or 20 pinholes out of even the finest drill bits. Alright, and so then we're through. And once you're through, I like to run the bit through the work. Let's see if I can get a real tight shot. I probably can't focus that close, but 
I'll probably break the drill bit trying to look at the screen. Anyway, I try and run the drill bit in and out and clean up any burrs, spin it around. And I like to put the bit in from the other side. Sometimes it's hard if it's really tiny. Yep. And then just work it back and forth. I'm going to open up this hole a little bit larger than the drill bit, but it's going to be very round. Okay, there you go. You can see it on camera, right? All right, the next thing I'm going to do is just black out this pinhole insert with a Sharpie marker. Okay, then when you're done, you want to just check to make sure that pinhole is uh, not covered up with any marker tip fibers or anything. Uh, it's nice and clean when I look out up to the light. See if you can see that there. A little bit, very out of focus. Anyway, it's a nice clean pinhole. We can mount the pinhole. Um, so put this guy on its face, put your pinhole in here, Grab your pinhole retaining ring, and this should be pretty tight, and you should just have to press it in. Let's see. Nice and firm. <laughs> okay, and then you can use something like the handle of a tool if you want to really click it into place. And that's removable, but it's not going anywhere. Um, it's nice and tight in the back, and there you go on the front. All right, the next thing we're going to do is glue together the glasses. I'm going to put on some gloves because we're going to work with uh, Weld On 3, which is a solvent. It's like a very thin... <laughs> it's a very volatile solvent that goes through skin like it's not even there. And it's probably pretty gross, so wear gloves, be careful. Work in a ventilated area. <laughs> All right, so both of these guys go into the glasses like this. Please note the orientation of the glasses, which side goes where. Um, and then you just hold the parts together and drip a little bit of this solvent into the crack, and it'll just get sucked up by capillary action and uh, melt the plastic together. So it's actually a welded bond rather than a glued bond. Anyway, this is a really clean way of working with um, acrylic or PLA if you need to bond it. Okay, and you just sort of press and hold for a few seconds until uh, the inner surfaces get tacky and then they become one piece of plastic. And I'm going to do that again for the other side. I'm going to leave the gloves on even though the next step is not gluing because we're going to get to gluing in a moment. So while this is drying, I'm going to put in my short screw as a stop over here. This hole on the right side. And I run that screw all the way down um, to the surface of the print. Then this guy's dry. It should fit like this. And here we can start to see the uh, glasses popping on and off. It's one detent and that's another detent. Anyway, um, we can put the second screw in now. Um, this is the position it'll be in is with uh, this magnet aligned here and this hole aligned. This magnet is not aligned when it's in the open position. Okay, so if you did that right, um, this guy should just be lightly snug against the uh, glasses and this should be flat against the black surface of the, the top of the lid print. And then you should have two magnetic detents for an, an action uh, like that. All right, but beyond the magnetic detent for this position, we want to add a physical stop as well. That's why I designed this uh, highly technical fuzzy print. Um, and I'm just going to glue this on here 
uh, also with um, weld on through. So uh, the mustache is going to be in this position, centered over the uh, mouth, which is the light baffle, um, and it's going to be right up against the glasses when they're in the down position and aligned over the pinhole. So again, I'm just going to hold this down like this and bring the needle applicator in, squirt a little bit and watch it get sucked up at the edge of the print. Okay, I'm going to do that in a couple of points. I'm being a little careful not to glue the glasses to the pinhole uh, while I have the mustache being glued. So once I get it tacked in place, I flip the glasses up and now we can really glue this uh, shutter stop or mustache down well. really like these precise needle applicators. really let you do a very clean and professional job bonding PLA and acrylic. Okay, so one thing you might want to do is flock this inner surface with some tape just to um, make sure you don't get any reflections when you're shooting into the sun. It's optional uh, if you like a lot of uh, flare off the body or uh, if you're not shooting into the sun. But um, I kind of like to take just a piece of gaffer's tape like this, uh, cut it to the right thickness uh, like that, and then just Kind of gently place it in around here. Just kind of work it around and, and keep it straight. Okay, and that works as a nice matte flocking. And that shouldn't get wet while you're developing with it um, because you're always sort of pouring down this side, right? but um, if it does get wet or grody, it's easy to replace. But that's a little bit of a nice upgrade for, um, you know, shooting into the light. Okay, get yourself an 86 millimeter can in the U.S. That's a Progresso soup can or a short version. They're standard sizes, 86 millimeter OD. Um, I like to take a piece of tape and just wrap it around here. Uh, around the lip here just to give something like really slightly squishy for the cap to grip into. I made the print such that it's you know medium tight but not not incredibly tight. Here I got a good fit it's not going to come off and if you want it even tighter you can add some more until it becomes almost impossible to uh, remove the lid but so a little bit of this tape gives you some uh, squishnicity for the cap to bite into. And there you go. Anyway, I'm going to come off. Um, then you can take your picture. Boop. And then stop taking your picture. Like that. And then um, develop as if it's a tank. Download links are in the description. Um, go download it, print it out, enjoy it. Send me a pic if you like it and you take some nice pictures. Thank you, I love you, goodbye. Whoa!